Hello everyone, my name is Tim Hansen, and today I'm going to be showing you how to configure denial of service and flood protection on a SonicWall Gen 7 Sonic OS 7 firewall. So flood or DOS protection on the firewall isn't necessarily contained within a single section or a single menu option. Where you go on the UI will ultimately depend on what you're specifically looking to mitigate against. And I'll cover the various options here quickly at a high level before we jump onto the firewall and go through the actual point and click setup. Okay, so number one, what we have is the ability to protect against control plane flooding. And this is essentially protection against core zero or the core zero CPU running too high, which when it does that can contribute to being locked out of the management on the firewall or even dropped connections for protocols the control plane CPU typically handles. Things like FTP and VoIP being two examples of those protocols. Number two, we have flood protection, which, as it sounds, protects you against floods of packets overloading the firewall and ultimately resulting in a denial of service for legitimate traffic. Number three, we have application layer DOS attacks. Okay, so an application layer DOS attack doesn't result in the firewall being DOS directly. Rather, its aim is usually to take advantage of a vulnerability or a coding error in an application sitting on a server of some sort behind the firewall. And the objective is to render that application useless or to maybe extract data from it or cause it to crash or something similar. Okay. So let's move over to the UI and we'll first take a look at how to set up control plane flooding. Control plane flooding can be found under network, firewall, advanced, and then connections. And you'll see that the setting is very straightforward. You simply enable it, pick a percentage, and then press accept. So how it works is when the control plane CPU or core zero hits the configured percentage, only control related traffic like management traffic destined to the firewall will be allowed access to the control plane. So this is obviously great for ensuring you don't get locked out of the management UI if core zero runs hot, but there is a negative to it and that being that it could possibly cause other side effects since by only or ensuring only control traffic can hit core zero, other legitimate traffic that typically gets handled by core zero could be dropped in order to facilitate that access. So things like FTP and VoIP. So just keep this in mind if you are enabling this feature. Okay, so next on the list is the general flood protection. And all the flood protection settings can be found here under network, firewall, and flood protection. And you'll see three sections to flood protection, one for TCP, one for UDP, and one for ICMP. Under the TCP settings tab, you'll see here, there's obviously a bunch of configurable options. I won't go over each of them just due to time, but in most cases, you can mouse over the tooltip for each to find out more information, such as what the TCP handshake enforcement does. If you're curious about what a setting does and there's no tooltip, I find the administration guide would or is the next best source of information. Okay, so here for me, I'm going to enable everything. And in most cases, there's really minimal risk of these settings causing any sort of conflict with normal network traffic. So you should be able to enable most, if not all of them as well. Okay. And then over on the next tab, we'll get some settings specific to SYN packets or SYN floods. For the SYN flood protection mode, for most environments, you're going to want to set this to proxy WAN client connections when attack is suspected. 
There are obviously two other settings you can set it to, but one will only report suspected attacks, which has its obvious security implications. And then the polar opposite to report only mode is a setting to proxy all SIN packets going through the firewall, in which case you may find yourself prone to either false positives or maybe even potential performance implications. Okay. And then the attack threshold is the main setting which determines how many SYN packets per second the firewall will allow before it starts dropping traffic or at least dropping SYN packets. The next tab houses the layer 2 protection section. And this essentially means that the firewall will blacklist the MAC addresses of locally connected devices if it detects floods of either SYN, reset fin, or even general TCP packets. So this is a good option to enable for preventing what's likely going to be an unintentional flood from internal devices. And then over here we have a section to enable WAN DDoS protection. And this simply allows us to have protection against floods hitting the WAN interface from the outside, which are not of the TCP, UDP, or ICMP protocols. Essentially, protection against everything else other than those three. All right. And then over to the last tab is where we have all the TCP flood-related statistics. And then moving over to the UDP flood protection option, as you can see, it is much simpler to set up than TCP. We've got a toggle button to enable protection as a whole, and then you have a threshold setting. You can also change the amount of time the sonic wall firewall will drop traffic for if it detects a UDP flood coming from a device. And if you want to get even more granular on the destinations UDP flood protection is applied to, you can do that here as well. All right, and then again, we get some statistics, but this time specific to UDP. The ICMP flood protection section gets the exact same options as you, as you saw under UDP. So you got an on button, the threshold, the block time and whatnot. I'll enable all this as well, keeping everything as default. And at this point, flood protection is essentially set up. Okay, so what you would typically do at this point is to just monitor the statistics and review logs periodically to ensure whether the thresholds you've set are appropriate for your network, and then adjusting them as needed. Okay, and then the last option we're going to look at for flood and DOS protection is application layer DOS protection. Now, application layer DOS protection is actually part of the intrusion prevention engine. So we can find everything under policy, security services, and intrusion prevention. If you're not sure how to configure IPS, and you do want to set it up, you can review the intrusion prevention how-to video. Okay, so that would be your best source for a simple configuration or a simple setup. But assuming IPS is already enabled and configured correctly, we can move right over to the signatures tab. Now, as you can see, there's no denial of service or flood protection signature category per se. But if we do punch in DOS into the search box here, you can see we'll get a return of just over 500 or so signatures matching our search. Okay, so each of these represents a vulnerability or a flaw in an application which, when taken advantage of, can do a number of things like locking up the application or maybe causing the application to crash or maybe pulling data out of the application or I suppose anything else that the application is not supposed to be doing by design. And if you scroll through, you can see there's signatures for everything ranging from DNS servers to file share servers, web servers, LDAP servers, etc., etc. 
neat thing you can click on blue hyperlinks to each signature to find out more details and more information about what specifically the signature is protecting against and then really assuming intrusion prevention is already enabled and configured correctly on your firewall you're already pr protected against bad actors making use of one of these vulnerabilities okay you don't have to necessarily perform any additional steps to get this working again assuming that ips is already set up okay and with that uh, that's it for dos and flood protection on gen 7 sonic os 7 firewalls all right so i'll con conclude this video and say thanks for watching and as always we'll see you next time